Hey, Daniel Bach here from JumpScience.com. This is the third video in the series on top speed. What I want to do in this video is apply some of the information from the first couple videos and talk about what sprinting should look like, uh, specifically how high the knee should be. Okay, so the first thing we have to cover is why we pick up the knees at all during sprinting. Okay, so uh, if we have forward velocity going over the ground, if we think of your body as your frame of reference, then you could say that the ground has backwards velocity going underneath you, right? And what we need to do in order to minimize braking force is snap the foot back underneath the hip, right? Uh, so we're trying to generate backwards velocity of the foot to match the backwards velocity of the ground, okay? Now in order to do that, we have to pick up the knee to uh, load up for that snap underneath the hip. So it's part of your sprinting cycle is picking up the knee, okay? Uh, so it's generating that backwards velocity of the foot. That's why you pick up the knee, all right? And it's not really any other reason. People have kind of come up with some things like we need to load up the glute and hamstring muscles. Uh, really, that stuff is just grasping for straws, okay? It's really all about uh, the cycle generating that backwards velocity of the foot. Okay, so that's why we pick up the knee. Now, with that in mind, how high should the knee be during sprinting? It's very important to understand that not everybody should have the same knee height. Okay? Uh, there's three factors I want to talk about that influence how high your knee should be when you sprint. First is just simply how fast you are. Okay? Uh, if you have more velocity going this way, you have more backwards velocity of the ground going underneath you, uh, then you need to produce more backwards velocity of your foot. If you have to produce more backwards velocity of your foot, you have to pick your knee up higher. Okay, it's very simple. So if you have uh, two sprinters who are otherwise identical, but one of them sprints 10 meters per second and one of them sprints 8 meters per second, the one who sprints 10 meters per second is going to have higher knees. Now, the one who sprints 8 meters per second may look at the faster one and say, oh, he's got higher knees. If I have higher knees, maybe I can sprint that fast. That is not the case. As we have covered, force is what allows you to sprint faster. Okay? The faster sprinter has higher knees because he's faster. Okay? He's not faster because he has higher knees. It's important to understand that. Another factor is height or specifically leg length. Uh, a longer lever makes it easier to generate velocity at the end of that lever. Okay, that's why we get a lot of tall pitchers in baseball. Okay, they have an easier time throwing really fast. Uh, in sprinting, when we're snapping the leg back to generate that backwards velocity of the foot, it's going to be easier to generate that velocity with a longer leg. Right? So, if you have two sprinters who uh, sprint the same speed, but one is significantly taller, the taller one's probably going to have lower knees because it's easier to generate that velocity with the longer leg. The cycle doesn't need to be as big. Another factor is force production capabilities. So something that we see very evident in jumping is different types of athletes who can jump the same height, but they have different ways of getting there. Right? You have your very uh, quick, explosive, springy jumpers, and then you have your somewhat slower, more strength-based jumpers. All right? They can achieve the same thing using a different set of abilities. Now, in sprinting, we don't see that so much because there is a much smaller window for producing force. But to a slight extent, you do get different types of sprinters who have the same top speed. Okay, you could have your purely explosive sprinter, or you could have a, a little bit more strength-based sprinter. The more strength-based sprinter is going to produce force a little bit more slowly. That means he or she is going to need more time on the ground. Okay, so we talked about this in the last video. To get more time on the ground, you're going to have to have a little bit less than ideal mechanics. You're going to have a little bit of braking force. Your foot's going to be a little in front of the hip. You're going to have to make up for that with a little bit more backside mechanics, right, uh, to get some forward propulsive force. So that's going to come with a lower knee. So strength-based sprinters are going to have lower knees.
Now, along with those three factors, there's any number of other factors that could influence how high your knee should be. Uh, you could talk about flexibility in particular muscles. You could talk about uh, proportions of one body segment to the other. You could talk about uh, stride rate versus stride length sprinters. Okay, the point of this all is that not everybody should have the same knee height. Not everybody should be trying to run with a horizontal thigh. So let's revisit ideal mechanics. Right? We talked about having zero braking force. That's going to require uh, major front side mechanics and a high knee in order to generate that backward snap of the foot. And then because you have no braking mechanics, uh, you don't need very much backside mechanics because you don't have to push behind you. Okay? So those are considered uh, efficient mechanics. Now my question is, if those are efficient mechanics, how come 800 meter runners don't use them? How come 400 meter runners don't use them? Those are efficiency races. The truth is, what we call ideal mechanics are only efficient at a certain velocity with a certain force production. Okay, again, you cannot run with Usain Bolt mechanics without Usain Bolt force. Now, that doesn't mean you don't train yourself in the direction of ideal mechanics, right? Do your B run, do your high knee butt kick, do your cycle drills, those are all great things. You push yourself in the direction of ideal mechanics as far as you can go. But understand, when you sprint, you cannot just decide to have ideal mechanics. There is a speed and a force requirement in order to have those mechanics. So what you can't do is see yourself sprinting and say, oh, you know what, my knees aren't high enough. That's not efficient mechanics. If I can just get my knees higher, then I'll be faster. No, that's not the way it works. Okay, that's just chasing after the wind. What you need to do is improve your force. With improved force is going to come improved speed and improved mechanics. So after all that, we still haven't answered the question, how high should your knees be when you sprint? Uh, my answer to that is don't worry about it. Okay, it is up to you and your coach to figure out what you need to focus on while you sprint. Uh, and that could potentially be very different for different people. You know, maybe some people need to think about getting their knees up, but I would say generally speaking, uh, there are a lot of better things to focus on when you're sprinting. Uh, posture, staying tall, staying relaxed, maintaining your stride rate, your arm action, and above all, focus on running fast, right? Look at the finish line and go, just compete. That's a great thing to focus on. But don't worry about exactly how high your knees are. Now, I wanna specifically address 400 meter runners. Uh, something I see in the 400 is on the home stretch, people will be really tired and they will just be desperately trying to get their knees up, right, in order to you know, maintain form. Here's what you've got to understand about the 400. First of all, it's not an all-out sprint, right? Uh, it's a, a sprint that you can maintain. So maybe it's like a 90% effort level. With a reduced effort level comes reduced force. With reduced force comes further from ideal mechanics, right? That is inevitable. So this is why 400 meter runners don't run with particularly high knees and they're uh, always gonna have some backside mechanics. That's not because they don't know how to run, it's because that's how the 400 is. That's what the force allows, right? So even in the first half of the race, you're gonna have less than ideal mechanics in a 400. Now on the home stretch, obviously you're fatigued you can't possibly be producing as much force as at the beginning. Less force means you're going to be even further from ideal mechanics. Okay, and you should be further from ideal mechanics. So if you're coming down the home stretch, trying to get your knees really high, it's going to slow you way down, right? Because at that point, you don't have anywhere near the force production required to sprint with those mechanics. Okay, so what can you focus on? Well, you know you're sprinting. Focus on your posture, relaxation, maintaining stride rate, and above all, compete, right? Look at the finish line and get there as fast as possible. Just race. All right, see ya.